Welcome back to the Chad Hasty Show News Talk 95.1 FM and 790 AM KFYO. In studio with me this morning as we, you know, look ahead. If you don't know, by the way, the Republican convention in Texas happening next week. And there's been a lot of focus on Texas politics, obviously, Mm -hmm. on the national level and on the national scene. A lot of focus on Texas politics. And for the last few years... The Hispanic population in Texas and the Democrats trying to get the big blue wave to uh, crash over the Hispanic population in Texas. And it hasn't worked out so well uh, for the Democrats. And in studio with me to uh, talk about that and much more, of course, uh, from the Texas Republican Party, uh, the new, I believe, special advisor to the chair of Hispanic engagement, uh, Adriana Aldine. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Lubbock. Good morning. I am so glad to be here. Buenos dias. Glad to have you here. And uh, I know you were in Lubbock yesterday. I uh, had an event here in Lubbock uh, last night. Tell folks a, a little bit about yourself and what you talked about uh, last night. What was the, the big topic of the evening? Well, thank you very much. I am Adriana Aldin, and I'm a political analyst on um, conservative issues. Uh, for the last 11 years, I have, I have been speaking on and, and Spanish networks, and national, um, the most important ones are Univision, Telemundo, CNN Spanish. Um, um, most people identify me because I have been 11 years in Al Punto with Jorge Ramos, which is very famous in Spanish-speaking <laughs> media. And, um, and, and certainly it is very important to have a conservative voice on, on all those outlets. Yeah. But the most important thing is with the Republican Party, since um, I was born in Mexico and I came to the Un- United States to go to college. College. I went actually to Bible college, and then um, um, I became an American in 1994. And my roots are Mexican, yes, but I am proudly an American, and the American flag is my flag. I love this country. I love the Constitution. And I've been working hard uh, to educate and empower the Latino community with uh, the values that make us um, an exceptional country, and really most of the Latino community, most of the Hispanics are um, are conservative. It is very important also that uh, the people know that, um, y- yes, um, um, we don't like identity politics. Uh, so many people abuse of that. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, um, it is many people who, who need to li- listen to the issues in the Spanish language, and we are able to do that. Uh, for many years when I was the national director of Voices Action, Voices Offering Conservative Empowering Solutions. I even traveled the country in Latinos and conservatism issues that unite with the Heritage Foundation and with the Leadership Institute, with the uh, Libre Initiative, and with um, other organizations through the boat, where I also work as a director of development, to to really go with, with, with a caravan called Latinos and Conservatism Issues That Unite. So we um, now, uh, in this new role in the Republican Party of Texas, uh, continue on the engagement that they already have been doing, but that right now we're visiting different parts of Texas because there are already people who are working in the grassroots engaging Latinos. Yeah. Well, and 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 we're glad to have you. And I think one of the, and we talked, you know, I just, we, we mentioned this during the break and when, when, when I introduced you, uh, the, the outreach to the Hispanic community uh, in Texas, it's something that Democrats have wanted to do. Obviously, mm-hmm. the Republicans have yes. been doing it. The, the Democrats can't seem to con- – they don't seem to have the same track record in Texas among the Hispanic community that they have in other states. Why is that? Well, um, this is interesting because during years – and we know that Texas was uh, uh, a state that went through different situations because before it used to be part of Mexico, then it became the Republic of Texas, and then it became part of the Union. But the, the interesting thing is this, that sometimes um, – People do not get the right message or they don't, don't hear uh, with the right rhetoric what are really the true values of the Republican Party. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, uh, the values that we stand for, uh, most of the Latino community, most of, of us believe in the right uh, of the life of the unborn. Yeah. And they will do whatever to protect. And it's interesting because when in Texas we p- passed SB2 a uh, few legislations ago, uh, the people who were advocating for that were many of Democrats as well in the Hispanic community. I was able to meet a lot of people back then because I was testifying before uh, the Senate committee and before um, the representatives ab- about this issue. But the other issue that is um, um, very important for the Hispanic community, but also for every American, is that 
we like to keep most of our money in our pockets. And we uh, believe that government should give accountability to the people and no people to the government. And once we sit down and we talk about these issues, uh, many uh, people uh, will understand. Uh, I can tell you just so many names of so many Republicans now who realize when they when they dwell in the conservative principles of the Republican Party that they are Republicans, for example, New Mexico uh, Governor Susana Martinez and her husband, and there are many people who have come like, wait a minute, we are Republican, yes. So uh, what we need to do is continue educating and to get more voters, which they are in heart Republicans, um, but they just don't know it yet. They just need to continue. So, yeah, how do you win learning. that battle? Because you brought up the identity politics, and the Democrats are yes. very good at playing identity yes. politics. And, and and telling different communities, no, you have to be a Democrat. You have to be a Democrat. But I, I agree with you. I, I think m m many in the Hispanic community, it's all about family. It's family values. It's it, you know, it, it it's something where it's almost a battle between what the Democrats are trying to sell and how they really feel. How do you, how do you deal with that? How do you battle that? Well, it's interesting because. Um, Yes, it is. It is all about identity uh, politics, but at the end of the day, they do not. They they betray the Hispanic community in many ways. The Democrats have done it, on regards to taxes, on regards to healthcare, on regards to education, and even on regards of their false promises on immigration reform, as we know, with former President Obama, which fell to his promise to all those uh, Latinos or Hispanics who were expecting something when he have. Uh, everything in his hands to do it. And the truth is that the Republicans are people who respect the rule of law. They want to do the things in the right way. Uh, and the federal way, certainly there are ways that we pass law, which is through Congress and not through uh, dictatorship or necessarily what is uh, um, um, an executive action because that doesn't help because we have three powers in this country. But at the same time, um, it is important that they, we can learn one thing from the Democrats, and it's like they spend time with the community and listening to them. And I see more and more Republicans. It doesn't matter the ethnicity, because Hispanic engagement is not only for those of us who are Hispanic and who speak Spanish. Uh, Hispanic engagement is for you, for every single Republican who want to interact, and the people are interested. Sometimes there is a language barrier. And some people maybe think, oh, if that person doesn't speak the language, maybe it's not an American. It could be. It could be truth. But you know what? His kids or her kids are American, and they are going to vote, and they are going to hear what mom and dad have to say. And if mom and dad say, you know what? You need to vote Republican because they are the ones who are going to protect you, that you have lower taxes, that they are, are going to protect your principles, your freedom. They are going to They are gonna help you that you don't have the debt that you have now thanks to the prior administration that we have. So they, they, they learn the concept. And the important thing is that um, one of the things that I have been recommending lately, and, and, and not lately, actually, several years since I read the book, and I have read it again, is Dr. Frank Lanz's uh, book. Um, and we, you know who Frank Lanz is, of mm -hmm. course, but for our audience, uh, he, he's the one who in TV, formerly he was in Fox, now he is in, in other uh, media, but um, he does the the all the questions with a panel of people on regards so he can take a statistics but he wrote a book that is called uh, words matter is not um, it's not what you say is what people hear mm -hmm. here and and what people hear is important and we republicans need to learn when we give a message how we give the message i'm not going to mention names uh, because some of you are um uh, co co colleagues of yours <laughs> who sometimes when they are in talk show radio they speak so harshly that honestly uh, they burned the bridges that I and many other good uh, Republicans have been building with the Hispanic community. We need to stop that, and we really need to go to the right issues to 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 be able to educate and bring them in and and learn from them because no, we're not only to teach uh, the Hispanic. Uh, Texans and uh, Hispanic Americans about how to do things. We have a lot to learn. They have the spirit of entrepreneurship. Um, they're great cooks. Is the best food. <laughs> they are, no, no, but honestly, they have the same values of family and faith, and I think it's important. Yeah, uh, very good. Uh, now, when looking at, uh, obviously, you're, you're dealing with Texas, you know, the Texas Republican Party and doing a lot of outreach. One question that you may get is, yeah, but, you know, there's this guy in the White House. And and he yes. doesn't like anyone from Mexico. He doesn't like him. I mean, that's that's what's being sold by the left is that you got a racist in the White House. So I mean, I'm sure that when you're doing your outreach, you've got to combat that. How do, how do you do that? That is true. Well, um, 
like uh, like me, there are many Republicans who were not uh, former supporters of our uh, now President Trump, um, uh, because some of us have been Republicans for a longer time, and some people who also received um, his um, statements in his um, uh, first speech as a candidate and other speeches later, we do not um, like what we heard, but he's not a politician. We need to recognize that. President Trump is a businessman, and he's a man who grew up in a privileged family, and sometimes those of us who have grown up in some privileged families, sometimes we need to learn how we can um, speak exactly talking about the rhetoric. But he's not a racist. He is just someone who believes um, in the rule of law and also who believes that if we need um, to protect uh, the national security of our country, is for the sake of all Americans and every single person who is here. But he has hired for many years, even before he became a president, people from all the types of minority groups, and that is important to recognize on President Trump. But it's also important important to recognize, and, I, and I'm saying this as Adriana Aldin, I'm not representing the, the GOP of anything in, in this moment, but I do believe that the president, like all of us, have to learn uh, how we can um, negotiate and, and smooth rough edges and, and really be polite and diplomatic about um, engaging so that people do not close their hearts and their minds towards opening to see that through this administration with President Trump, the unemployment on minorities have been reduced more than any other administration in the last 17 years. So Hispanics and African Americans have more more jobs than ever before. Also, we need to recognize what he did during the State of the Union. You remember that offer that he put on the table and he said all those DACA, which many Hispanics are interested in that, um, people, he offered pathway to citizenship. I was shocked. I was live with Jorge Ramos from Miami in Univision transmitting when I hear the State of the Union. And of course, I have the State of the Union speech um, about uh, 45 minutes before he gave it. I already knew that this was coming up. But to be honest, I was surprised. And then the Democrats did not took the offer, mm -hmm. did not even negotiate. You know why? Because, oh, but what happened with the parents? He wants to separate families. And the truth is, what a negotiator does, Chad. A negotiator puts something in the table, expecting something back. The Democrats fell the Hispanic Americans. They fell because they didn't really care. Because if they really care, they negotiate with a president who was a very generous offer. So we are seeing here that Republicans are the ones who really bring things in the right manner and um, protecting all of us in, in every issue, our money, our freedom, our health care. And, and, and I invite every single Hispanic that if you have never voted Republican, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting? And if, if, if there are people who want to get more involved on the grassroots level, what's your recommendation? How do they do well, so? Well, go to your local GOP and see um, if you can have contact with your local chair of the GOP and, and, and the other people. There are people like here in Lubbock. Uh, I'm impressed. They have a great uh, uh, Hispanic engagement um, uh, committee, but also um, uh, just ask questions because sometimes, many times, is that uh, you don't know. Certainly, um, uh, we're going to have the convention that you mentioned, and it's important that they know that during the convention, the delegates are gathered to make decisions on what is the, is the platform, and they decide the party's position at the state level. And um, the important thing is that uh, we have a record of number of Hispanic delegates at this convention, and I'm, and I'm excited because that's mean, that means that Hispanic Texas are recognized that the Republican Party is their best hope for the most prosperous and successful life for them and their families. And Chairman Dickey and I are holding a series of roundtable discussions to receive input from Hispanic Texas leaders. Leaders. We have done that in El Paso. We have done that in Dallas. Uh, we were here in Lubbock. We're going to go to McAllen. We're going to go to other. Uh, we're going to have one in San Antonio with a lot of people. Um, I, I just mean in the party as an advisor for less than a couple months. But but we want to do as much work as possible to engage all those people who are already doing something to learn from you. But just get involved. There is also a page, uh, Texas G uh, GOP, uh, um, and and you can go and there is uh, there is one section in Spanish that we're starting developing. Um, and just uh, just talk with your local Republicans. Yeah. Adriana Dean, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me here. Absolutely. Gracias. Great to have you on the show.